Good morning and welcome to worship at Wyoming Presbyterian Church. My name is Reverend Caroline Steineman Unzaga. I'm the interim pastor with the congregation. And on behalf of our entire church, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you watching from your homes to mine on this second Sunday of Easter. Now, I know that we normally think of Easter as a single day, but Easter actually comes from an English word that means dawn or rising. And it refers to an entire season, seven Sundays, in which we celebrate the risen Christ amongst all of us. That means every single Sunday, we'll be looking at different appearances of Jesus with his disciples and looking at what that means for us in our lives today. Now, I don't have a lot of announcements today, only that I really miss seeing all of you, and I'm sure that you miss being together as well. And this is just a reminder that though we are not meeting together physically, that our church continues on. That means that groups from the church, while they can't meet physically together, are still meeting via Zoom. That means that we still are having Zoom coffee hour after worship. And so after worship, refill that coffee mug, get back on your couch and join others for some great fellowship. That means that we still have opportunities for kids to participate in Sunday school and more is going to be coming from Sabrina on that. It means our children's musical practices are continuing to go with Ebony. And it also means that we still welcome your financial support. And so if you do pledge or give to Wyoming, please do go to that website and give online. And we appreciate your generosity ahead of time. Now, that's all I have for our announcements today. If you would, center your hearts and minds around these words of scripture. Peace be with you. Jesus stands among us. Peace be with you. The risen Lord is here. Let's begin our worship with our opening hymn, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strength. Come ye faithful, raise the strength. God's scripture and word for us today, let us first go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Imperishable, undefiled, and unfading is our inheritance and in your word, God. Open our hearts, silence our distractions, speak to us now, Lord, for we are listening. Amen. Friends, our gospel lesson today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. And where we're picking up in our gospel lesson today, Jesus has just appeared to Mary Magdalene at the empty tomb. And she is gone and she has told the disciples all that she has experienced and she exclaims to all of them, I have seen the Lord. We're picking up now at verse 19 and going through verse 31. Listen now for the word of the Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, 
And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, put my fingers in the mark of the nails, and my hand in the side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Friends, this is the word of the Lord, for which we say, thanks be to God. Good morning. It's so great to be joining all of you and celebrating this second Sunday of Easter together. Now, I've remarked before that as Lent began, we would have never expected to have celebrated the Lenten season together the way that we did. We didn't know during Holy Week that we would be taking branches out of our backyard and parading around our living rooms. We didn't know that we would be serving ourselves communion at our own dining room tables. We didn't know that we would be meditating on Jesus' last seven words over candlelight in our own living rooms. And we didn't realize when we began Lent that we would be spending Easter at home instead of flooding the doors of our church building the, on the biggest Sunday of the year. We would have never guessed that instead of having many visitors from all over the country joining us, that our church building would be empty, as empty as the empty tomb. And still, despite and especially because of these circumstances of this global pandemic, we joined our voices from wherever we were in the state, country, or world, and we lifted them up saying, Alleluia, he is risen, he is risen indeed. Now, this Sunday, as we enter into Easter season, is another example of how things have changed for us amidst this global pandemic. What I mean by that, in the church world, this Sunday typically is considered low Sunday or Pulpit Supply Preacher Sunday, or if you're in a bigger church, it's considered Associate Pastor Sunday. That means that a lot of folks after Easter Sunday are recovering from all of the celebrations, or maybe they're still traveling back home from uh, spring break, or if you're a clergy or a musician, you might be taking the Sunday off after lots of festivities during Lent and Holy Week. But this year, it's a little bit different, isn't it? If you're like me, your plans have been canceled, they've been changed, and there's nowhere to go except for our own houses and our own living rooms. And so this week, though you might not be aware that we always hear this story of Doubting Thomas on the second Sunday of Easter, this week, we can all hear the story together and with new ears. You see, 
a lot of us like to put the accent on the Easter story, on the empty tomb, because that story is at the heart of our faith. That is, that people love the story so much that many get up early at the crack of dawn for sunrise services to watch the sun rise and to sing with the earliest morning light, Alleluia, he is risen indeed. But many of us don't stick around till later that night. And that's the story that we get today. It's the story of Doubting Thomas. It's the story of the disciples who are not out singing from the mountaintops about Jesus being risen, being risen indeed. Indeed, after they had heard the testimony of Mary Magdalene, the disciples aren't out shouting for joy. Instead, they're hiding for their lives behind shut doors. They're fearing that if they go out, they might be recognized and their fate might be the same of that of Jesus. Now, they could have expected that all of this would happen the way that it did, but they didn't. When they entered Jerusalem for Passover that year, they didn't expect, despite Jesus' forecast and prediction, that he would be sentenced to death and killed. And then later he would rise again on the third day. Yet they didn't expect that. And so they find themselves behind these shut doors, fearing for their lives. And yes, in a place that they never expected to be. They're disoriented, they're distressed, they're scared and they don't really know what to do with this new normal. Now, this year, this story seems to resonate the most with our circumstances. All of us are inside, we're sheltering in place, our doors are shuttered, and we're fearing an enemy outside. Even though we've heard the good news that Jesus is risen, he is risen indeed. And though we sit with that good news and we are people of resurrection, we still can't help but feel scared. We feel disoriented and we're not really sure what to do of this new normal. We're not sure what the next step is. Now, when I feel disoriented, when I feel scared, when I am feeling some of those dark emotions, I like to turn to the writings of pastor theologian Barbara Brown Taylor, who wrote a book about spending time in the dark called Learning to Walk in the Dark. And her thesis is this, is that we spend a lot of time as Christians focusing on the light. Jesus is the light of the world. And so we focus on goodness and love and prosperity and yet we also live with the reality that darkness and night are 50% of our life experience. So focusing only on the light sets us up for failure. She talks about darkness as being, yes, a physical darkness. So being dark outside, having night, things like that. But she also talks about darkness as dark emotions or any experience where we feel in some ways handicapped. That is when we are out in the light of the day, when we're experiencing confidence, when things are going well for us, when we're experiencing all the love and joy that we wish to feel, we don't necessarily experience the same things that we do when we're not feeling those things. When we're walking in the dark, when we feel like we have impediments, when things aren't going so well, perhaps there are lessons to learn in those spaces as well. In fact, she says it this way that she has learned things from living and walking in the dark that she would have never learned if she had been in the light. And so she posits this, that she needs the dark just as much as the light. Now, if that doesn't sit well with you, that's okay, because I feel like there's been a lot out there of people trying to make lemonade out of lemons. 
people trying to find silver linings amidst this really difficult time that we're going through. And the truth is that many of us are just living in survival mode. And so I would posit to you, if you're in that survival mode, maybe all that you can hope to glean right now is that in this story where the disciples also were living in, in survival mode, when they didn't know what to do and they weren't feeling particularly insightful, even amidst that darkness and even amidst that anxiety, Jesus entered into their space with his wounds and he shared his peace with them. Now, I, I share with you that I too have been in survival mode during this pandemic. I haven't been feeling particularly well, mild symptoms, thank God. Uh, my husband has also been sick with mild symptoms. We've been homeschooling our kids. We've been working our jobs. We've been trying to reach out to all of you and stay connected digitally and virtually. And it's been hard. It's been hard for us. And I know it's been hard for you all as well. And amidst all of this, amidst the storm that we've been experiencing, we had this show up on our uh, front doorstep and I'll share it with you. We had a mug that says, peace, show up amidst our storm. And this coffee mug, because it's oddly insightful, I'll, I'll share with you the quote. It says this, peace, it does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things and still be calm in your heart. And so I ask all of you, as you're in your different shuttered rooms, as you're hiding from the enemy outside, how is Jesus showing up for you? What does that peace of Christ mean? As you're homeschooling your kids, what is that peace of Christ? As you're worried about your family and your loved ones, what is that peace of Christ? As you see the death toll go up and up and up, as you start to hear stories about people you love getting sick or dying, what is that peace for you? How is Jesus entering into that space with his wounds and sharing that peace. Friends, we're living in a very trying time, a very difficult time. And so if you haven't experienced that peace yet, if you can't believe in that peace yet, you're not alone. And that's the hope that we get from this week's story, that it took doubting Thomas one full week until he could see Jesus coming into his midst. And Jesus came in and showed him his wounds and shared that peace with him as well. If you're having a hard time believing, you're not alone. Those disciples had a hard time believing, and some of us do as well amidst really hard times. But the promise we have is that perhaps in these dark spaces, that's where we can maybe first see the light of Christ shine. Perhaps in the most anxious places where we inhabit, that's where we can finally experience the beast of Christ. Friends, the story that we hear today is that later that evening, after Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, he appeared to those disciples later behind shuttered doors and he shared his peace with them. And so I wonder, how exactly might he be sharing his peace with you today? It's in the name of the one who was and is and is to come that we share this word of hope. Amen.
Let us now invite into our midst the risen Lord Jesus as we lift up our thoughts and our prayers to our Lord God. Let us pray. God of redemption and resurrection, we come to you as we are, rejoicing that our Lord is alive, yet still afraid of the chaos around and within us. We can't help but doubt your goodness when so much suffering surrounds us. The pandemic continues to cause sickness and to take life. Resources are scarce in the places where they're absolutely needed the most. People all over the world are desperate for life's basic necessities. Our Easter hallelujahs get stuck in our throats when we survey the pain of your creation. And so, Lord Jesus, we pray, come. Come and walk among us. Show us your wounds. Give us your peace. Breathe the Spirit into our weariness and our worries. God, you continue to pursue us with grace and mercy. We're grateful for that forgiveness that you show 
to us every time you come into our midst. And we're unsure if we have the courage or the ability to extend that forgiveness to others. Sometimes we can hold grudges and sometimes we can be petty. Sometimes we participate in systems that benefit ourselves. Sometimes we don't care enough about those who are suffering from poverty or inequity. And so, God, we invite you into our midst this Sunday and every Sunday. Come, risen Lord, walk among us. Show us you are alive. Grant us that peace that passes understanding, that peace that we can spread to others as well. Embolden us with the Spirit so that we might speak your word and do your will. You are here, risen Lord. You are wounded and you're standing before us. Your presence gives us peace. Your Spirit, our advocate, our comforter, our teacher will show us the way to do your will. And so it is with our voices raised wherever we are in the world that we raise our voices together and we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let's continue our worship service with our final hymn, Christ is Alive. Let us sing. Christ is alive, my Christians sing the cross gives us that peace that passes all understanding. Go out with that peace that we spread to everyone as we share that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And go out with this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Christ is alive and Oh. Uh -huh.